Bruchem Aboim. Thank you very much for coming. The topic tonight of our discussion will be on uh, what comes first. So what does that mean? There was a professor in a large university who walked into his classroom and he was carrying with him a large glass jar. He proceeded to fill the jar with rocks. When he finished filling the jar, he asked the class if the jar was full. They all agreed that it was full. He then picked up a box of pebbles and poured them into the same jar. He shook the jar lightly and the pebbles of course rolled into the open areas between the rocks. He then asked the students again, is the jar full? And again they answered unanimously, the jar was full. Then the professor picked up a box of sand and he poured the sand into the jar. And of course, the sand filled up everything else that was open in the jar. The professor said to the class, I want you to recognize that this jar is your life. The rocks are the important things in your life. Your family, your friends, your health, and all the other things that are critical for your existence. The pebbles, on the other hand, are the secondary things in your life, such as your job, your house, your car, and the sand is everything else. Now remember, if you put the sand in the jar first, then there's no room for anything else like the pebbles and the rocks. So in life, there is what we call a pecking order, and so too in our service of God Almighty. We say in our morning prayers every day, the Talmud Torah Kenegit Kulam, that learning Torah is equal to all the commandments that God has given us. The question is, what exactly does that mean? Now there are those who believe that when you are learning Torah, you are not obligated to perform any other commandment. Osek mitzvah, patra mitzvah. If you're involved in a mitzvah, you don't have to do another mitzvah. What the verse is telling us, I, pardon me, I believe personally that that's not the case and not what the verse is really telling us. What the verse is really telling us that one must study in order to be able to perform a mitzvah. You cannot perform a mitzvah unless you know how to do it properly. So one is not obligated to study Torah and that's what it means that Talmud Torah can negikulam, that studying Torah is equal to everything else. Now there's a story told of the Tzemach Tzedek who was brought up by his grandfather, the Alter Rebbe. Samach Tzedek was the third Lubavitcher Rebbe. It seems that the Alter Rebbe, after he died, would appear to the Samach Tzedek often. However, there was a period of time when this vision of the Alter Rebbe appeared to his grandson with a disappointed look on his face. This bothered the Samach Tzedek greatly, but he really couldn't find out the reason for his grandfather's negativity. One day, while the Semach Tzedek was on his way to morning services, a poor par farmer approached him and asked him for some money so he could go to the marketplace to buy some produce. Said he was able to make some money. The Semach Tzedek nodded and agreed to give the poor man money, but asked him to come back after he had finished his morning prayers. He put on his talit, and then it dawned on him that by the time he would finish his prayers, it would be very difficult for the poor man to purchase the best produce and also to find customers that still had a need of his merchandise. So the Semach Tzedek immediately took off his talit and went looking for the poor man and he gave him the money that he needed and after that he went back to start his morning prayers. That morning when the Alter Rebbe appeared to him it was with a warm and smiling face. Everything in life everything in life and religion has a pecking order. And that order can change depending upon circumstances. On Yom Kippur, we say a prayer that is called the al Khaits, which translates because of the sins, and we beat our chest with each one that we say. Altogether, there are 44 al Khaits. One of the al Khaits is al Khait shechotonu lefanecha b'yetzahara, for all the sins that I've committed with my evil inclination. Aren't all sins that we do connected to the Yetzirah, to the evil inclination? 
And the answer is no. When we first become religious, the challenges that we face for the most part are black and white. Do this, don't do that. However, once we get past the basics, then the challenge becomes much more difficult. There are no longer black and white decisions. Many times they become gray. It is much like a multiple choice exam. There may be five questions, pardon me, five choices to one question. Three are wrong. The fourth answer is correct. But the fifth answer is definitively correct. So if the fifth choice is not there, then the fourth would be the correct answer. But given that the fifth choice is there, the fourth answer is wrong. So the other 40 through 43 al khaits are sins that we do not with our Yetzir Hara, but with our Yetzir Tov. We do a mitzvah, but we do the wrong one. Now we need to make a distinction between what we want and what God Almighty wants of us. Now it sounds easy, but in reality it really isn't. We are like, we are for the most part, subjective beings. Our decisions in life are based upon our likes and dislikes, what we desire. It is only the Torah and our connection to God that allows us to make decisions in life based on emet, on truth, whether we like it or not. Now, many people describe a mitzvah as something you don't want to do. It doesn't sound very good, but it really is very important. What it is saying is that the Torah forces us to leave our comfort zone. It forces us to grow as individuals. It forces us to become better and to change ourselves. If someone were to ask you, what is the most important thing that Torah teaches us? In fact, if you were to break down all of Torah into one word, what would that word be? I think the word would be discipline. We practice religion, and we take that discipline with us into the world. Show me a person with discipline, someone who is able to stay the course, and I will show you a successful person. Now, many times our choices in life are based on convenience. What's the easiest path for us to take? There's a saying that if you are on a path with no obstacles, you're probably on the wrong path. Life was not meant to be easy. Life was meant to be a challenge. No pain, no gain. We are taught this at the moment we enter this world, a painful experience for both the mother and the child. However, we can, take, we can make the challenge easier by following what it is that God has instructed us to do in his Torah. And also being able to see past the moment. When you can see past the moment, then you're able to reap great rewards. If everything is based on the moment, you don't get too far. Now when it comes to standing in line at a checkout counter at a store, or at a bank, when you're in line at a smorgasbord at a party, we always want to be in front. We want to be first. We don't want anyone else to take cuts. However, when it comes to being early for prayer, or giving a donation, or going to listen to a Torah lecture, we many times don't mind someone else pushing in front of us. We have it backwards. We rush to make ourselves feel good. Our objective should be, in reality, to make God and other people feel good first. You know, I once gave a young boy, he was maybe seven years old, a dollar bill to put into a charity box. He took the bill from my hand and ran to the pushka to put the bill inside. He wasn't keeping it. He had no part of it. But he ran. We should imitate young children who have a true enthusiasm to do a mitzvah. May God open our hearts and our minds so that we can see the true joy and benefit of serving God Almighty and man with an alacrity. And with that, may we quickly herald in the coming of Mashiach Sekenu, quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. Shabbat Shalom.